dreamers. Our mouths shall be filled with laughter and our tongues with rina. Then they shall say among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord will do great things for us and we shall rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like waters in the Negev. Those who sow tears shall reap with songs of joy. Rina. Though he goes along weeping, carrying the seed bag, he shall come back with songs of joy, with Rina carrying his sheaves. Rina is a particular kind of song. It's a song that celebrates the completion of the vision, the redemption. Elsewhere, it's also used for the, for the rejoicing at the destruction of the wicked. It's the song that culminates the vision. Rina and Shira are different. And what's so remarkable about that is that the opening word of Psalm 126 is Shir, the other type of song. It's one of the songs of ascents. The 15 Psalms of ascents, you know those 15? 120 through 134. They all start with the word shir, like shira, which is the other type of song. So here we have the other type of song, but it's full of the word rina. Now this discourse has already gone on too long, so let me just cut to the chase. <laughs> the 15 Psalms of Ascents, very few of them are too happy. In fact, they're, most of them are pretty somber. They talk about enemies attacking and evil and calling out to God from the depths and where is my help going to come from? They're very plaintive. They're pleading with God for help, most of them, almost all. A good 12 out of 15 are pretty serious. They're not happy songs. They're more prayers, even though they're called song. And this one is in there, and this one's really happy. It's about the redemption. I think the key word is we were like dreamers. You see, the psalm, the psalm, this psalm, Psalm 126, the person who wrote it, King David, obviously never saw the fulfillment of the vision he's describing. He's describing a dream. We were like dreamers. What a dreamy fantasy that is, that it will be said among the nations that the Lord has done great things for his people. Wow. We're about to read Psalm 117, right before Psalm 118. Psalm 117 describes how all nations and all peoples will praise and thank the Lord for his kindness upon Israel. Simple enough. What would my great-grandparents in Poland have thought when they read that? Okay. All the nations, all the goyim, all these people around us, is this before or after the pogrom that they're going to praise and thank the Lord for all that he's done for his people Israel? I mean, seriously. We live in a time where it's totally normal that there's millions Millions upon millions growing every day of Christians worldwide who honestly and sincerely praise the Lord for his kindnesses upon Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's normal to us, and historically it's absurd. It's, it's insane, historically speaking. My great-grandparents and yours Go back a few more generations if you need to. Could not imagine this, a meeting such as this. So David is saying, Shir, this is a future vision that I'm passing on to be passed on generation to generation as something for us to teach our children that will be part of things. We're not celebrating it yet because it hasn't happened yet. But when the time comes, it's going to be Rina. It's going to be a song celebrating the culmination of the vision of redemption. It will become Rina. What started out as Shira will become Rina. And folks, 
you're not here today as spectators. And I don't just mean that because you know, you know, it's really important that God you on your feet and singing and dancing. And I said this in that interview we did, uh, Pastor Bill. Would you believe I was in Corpus Christi, Texas, and someone came to the event I was speaking at because he's watched that video. So there's actually people out there who watch you. <laughs> I, I, I was shocked too, I was shocked. <laughs> I asked him if he just like that was a mistake or something. <laughs> no, but seriously, listen. If there's a message that you could take into your heart and take back with you, it's this. We all glory, give glory to God and marvel at the miracle of the gathering of the people of Israel. Here I am, right? I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, raised in Canada. My grandparents were from Russia and the Ukraine. I am an ingathered exile of the people of Israel. Yay! I am a fulfillment of prophecy, right? So are you. Every single prophecy of the ingathering of the people of Israel, if you keep reading a few more verses, it talks about those among the nations, those from the other parts of the world, from all the different cities who come to Israel to seek the Lord and join us, and ultimately culminating in the house of prayer for all nations. The prophecies are of the ingathering of the exiles of Israel are not a story about the Jews. It's a story about all of us. You're in those verses. The difference between biblical stories of the past and biblical stories about the future is that the biblical stories about the future don't include names because they haven't happened yet. That story is about you when you decided to come on this trip, when you decided to come here today. When Zechariah says people from many, from many lands will come, many cities will come, and they will seek the Lord in Jerusalem at the time of the ingathering of the people of Israel, you chose to be who Zechariah was talking about. You made that choice. So you don't have to go around looking at archaeological sites to see things that are biblical. You can look in the mirror when you get back to your hotel room and you'll see something biblical. That's my message to you tonight. My message to us tonight. And it's my message, by the way, to Jews when I speak in synagogues too, that they should recognize who you are. That the redemption of Israel is a catalyst for the redemption of all who call on the name of the Lord. Amen.